Good evening, everybody, and welcome to Living Word Church. We want you to stand together and worship with us as we praise the Lord together. Sing this with me. Wandering into the night, wanting a place to hide this weary soul. This bag of bones I try with all my might But I just can't win the fight I'm slowly drifting A vagabond Just when I ran out the road I met a man I didn't know And he told me that I was not alone You picked me up, you turned me around You placed my feet on solid ground I think the Master, I think the Savior Because you healed my heart, you changed my name Forever free, I'm not the same. I think the master, I think the savior, I thank God. I cannot deny what I've seen. I've got no choice but believe my doubts are burning. Like ashes in the wind So, so long to my old friends Burden and bitterness You can't just keep it moving You ain't welcome here From now till I walk the streets of gold I'll sing of how you saved my soul The sweet word son has found his way back home You picked me up, you turned me around You placed my feet on solid ground I think the master, I think the savior Because you healed my heart, you changed my name Forever free, I'm not the same. I think the master, I think the savior, I thank God. Oh, I thank God. I thank God. I lost another one, I am free. Oh, I am free. Oh, I am free. Sing it out with me now. Hell lost another one. I am free. Oh, I am free. Oh, I am free. Sing it out, sing it out. Hell lost another one. I am free. Oh, I am free. Oh, I am free. One more time, low hell lost another one. I am free. I am free. Oh, I am free. Here we go. Hell lost another one, I am free. Oh, I am free. Oh, I am free. Hell lost another one, I am free. Oh, I am free. Oh, I am free. Hell lost another one, I am free. Oh, I am free. Oh, I am free. Hell lost another one, I am free. Oh, I am free, yeah. You pick me up, you turn me around, you place my feet on solid ground. I think the master, I think the savior, because you healed my heart, you changed my name. Forever free, I'm not the same. I think the master, I think the savior. I thank God, yeah. oh I thank God, oh I thank God, I thank God. Get up, get up. 
sing it out. Get up, get up, get up, get up out of that grave. Get up, get up, get up, get up out of that grave. People are rising and walking this morning, this evening. Get up, get up, get up, get up out of that grave. We're rising up, we're walking, Lord. Dry bones are coming to life. Oh, these bones will walk, Lord. They'll walk, Lord. Singing, get up, get up, get up. Get up out of that grave. Get up, get up, get up. Get up out of that grave. Get up, get up, get up. Get up out of that grave. Get up, get up, get up. Get up out of that grave. Cause you pick me up. You turn me around. You place my feet on solid ground. I think a master, I think a savior. Because you heal my heart, you change my name. Forever free, I'm not the same. I think the master, I think the savior, I think God. Lord, we worship you, God. We give you the praise, Lord. God, it's only yours. It's always yours, God. We thank you, Lord. We thank you for your goodness, your kindness, and your mercies, Lord. Your wonder-working powers in our lives. That, God, you're making all things new. Making all things new, Lord. Yeah. 
There is no higher name Jesus you reign above it all You reign above it all My God You reign above it all Above it all Cause you sent the darkness running Out of an empty grave And seated alone in glory And thrown on the highest praise You sent the darkness running Out of an empty grave on the highest praise cause you sent the darkness running out of an empty grave and I seated alone in glory and thrown on the highest praise cause you sent the darkness running out of an empty grave and I seated alone in glory on the highest praise You reign above it all You reign above it all <clears throat> The universe and over every heart There is no high Let all of heaven and the earth erupt in song Sing hallelujah to the everlasting one There is no higher name Jesus you reign above it all You reign above it all lift your hands just begin to just thank him for all that he's done who he is in our lives lord we just love you tonight we thank you for your presence for your goodness oh god lord you reign above every circumstance everything in our lives lord jesus you reign over this nation you reign over the nations you are god and lord we just acknowledge that tonight we thank you for your presence father have your way in this service tonight we give you all the praise. We love you. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Thank you, Pastor Jeremy. Great job, great job. We want to welcome everybody who's watching tonight. Thank you for joining us. Um, just so excited to, to be here tonight and uh, to just be worshiping with you. And We had a great service this last Sunday with Pastor Ernest Jones and his wife, Cynthia, and the, his team he brought. Uh, just had a great homecoming and a great potluck dinner afterwards. And uh, if you did, if you weren't here, you missed it. So, uh, but anyway, we'll be having other ones. But uh, thank you so much for joining us tonight. And uh, if you're watching for the first time, we want to welcome you. And uh, let us know. Send us uh, an email or text. Let us know you're watching. And and uh, want you to know we are we're not meeting in person tonight. But we will uh, be doing it from here on out. We're just we're uh, just doing it a little bit different tonight, live stream. But we do meet every Sunday morning at 10:30 live. So at this time, we're going to receive the Lord's tithes and offerings. Hallelujah, Amen. And um, if you're giving by check, make your checks payable to Living Word Church or LWC. You can mail that in. If you want to give by cash, of course, you'll have to be here. And loose change, you have to be here. If you want to give online, you can give online at livingwordnc.com, or you can text to give 910-390-1212. And uh, as usual, I do want to thank 
all of you for your giving, for um, just being generous, for, uh, for doing what God's told us to do. And we really do appreciate all you do. We don't have, like I said before, we don't have sponsors. It's up to the Lord's people to provide. And we, we, do, we take care of the ministry here and the work here, but we also give in other parts of our, the community and throughout the world. So we want to thank you. So let's hold our offering up to the Lord. Father, we thank you so much for the opportunity to give, to be a blessing. And Lord, I thank you. You show yourself faithful. Father, we thank you that you are our provider. You are Jehovah Jireh, and thank you that you will just provide whatever we need. God, and thank you that you will bless each person as they give, bless this ministry, that we have more than enough to do what you've called us to do. And we give you all the praise in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. And we do have some announcements. Uh, we do. We had homecoming this last Sunday. went wonderful. And also... This coming Christmas, uh, on December the 12th, we'll be having a Christmas experience, and we're going to be having, the children have been work, working very hard on this production, and the uh, Jeremy and the band, or Pastor Jeremy and the band are going to be doing some Christmas songs, and it's going to just gonna be fun, so invite everybody you know, we want it to be a big, big Christmas celebration, amen, amen. So tonight, um, we, uh, we're going to be having prayer, and we have prayer usually the beginning of November. We didn't do it last week because we had the Operation Christmas Child, and that went wonderful, by the way, and we had a great time with the kids and having lots of good food and uh, packing the boxes and had plenty of, uh, plenty, um, uh, enough material to send kids across the world, wherever the shoeboxes go. And uh, to do 100 boxes. So that was really, really cool. But tonight we're going to be praying some. And I always like to speak a little bit on prayer just to encourage us to build our faith. So turn with me to Matthew chapter 6. Matthew chapter 6, verse 25. Matthew chapter 6, verse 25. And Lord, we thank you for your word tonight. I pray that you would bless the reading of your word, at, that, Lord, we would have hearts that would receive everything you want for us. Father God, we thank you, Lord. Give us a spirit of wisdom and revelation and knowledge of your will. And Holy Spirit, we just open ourselves up to you. Have your way in our lives tonight. In Jesus' name, amen. In Matthew chapter 6, verse 25, it says this, Therefore I tell you, do not be anxious about your life, what you will eat, or what you will drink, nor about your body, what you will put on. Is not life more than food and the body more than clothing? Look at the birds of the air. They neither sow nor reap nor gather into barns, and yet your heavenly Father feeds them. Are you not of more value than they? And which of you, by being anxious, can add a single hour to his span of life? And you know, this day and time, this season of time is so easy to get caught up in worrying and being anxious because we tend to compare ourselves with other people. We see what other people are doing on social media and everybody has their act together, it seems like. They're, they bought everything they need. And then we look at our lives and we see so much missing. And then we say, well, we don't have this and have this. And we need to be thankful. You know, we're coming up on Thanksgiving and we need to be thankful for what God's done. We need to be grateful for what he's done. But he's saying here, don't get caught up on looking at all these things. He says this, your, heaven, you, your heavenly Father feeds them. It says, uh, are you not more valuable than they? And which of you, by being anxious, can have a single hour to his lifespan? In other words, what, what's it going to do? What's it going to uh, benefit you to, to worry, to doubt, to think about those things? It says this, and why are you anxious about clothing? Consider, consider the lilies of the field, how they grow. They neither toil nor spin, and yet I tell you, even Solomon in all his glory was not arrayed like one of these. In verse 30, it says, but if God so clothes the grass of the field, which today is alive and tomorrow is thrown into the oven, will he not much more clothe you, O you of little faith? In other words, God does want to provide for us. God is going to take care of us. But that shouldn't be our main focus. It says, therefore, do not be anxious 
saying, What shall we eat, or what shall we drink, or what shall we wear? For the Gentiles seek after all these things, and your heavenly Father knows that you need them all. Then it goes to verse 33. But seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things will be added to you. Therefore, do not be anxious about tomorrow, for tomorrow will be anxious for itself. Sufficient for the day is its own trouble. But I want us to focus tonight on what we're seeking after. I want us to focus tonight on seeking first the kingdom of God. We're going to be praying tonight. We're specifically going to be really hitting praying and crying out for revival in this ministry, for God to work in this ministry like he wants to. In other words, this whole passage, what Jesus was saying, he, he's wanting us to get the big picture of everything he's trying to say here. In other words, our focus in prayer shouldn't just be on things that we need and want, and, but those are important. We do need things, but God already knows what we have need of. God doesn't want us to get in a place of our lives of being anxious, of worrying, or what are we going to eat? What am I going to do for a job? What, am I, what about my children? What about all these things? We, we shouldn't be anxious and worrying about those things. We, we have to trust God. This whole passage is talking about trusting the Lord, believing that God is going to take care of us. And God is saying this, if we have the proper attitude that our focus will be to seek God first, our proper attitude would, would be that we want more God more than anything, then guess what? God's going to provide for what we need. We need to put him first. The right protocol when we come to God is worship. The right protocol and attitude of heart is, Father, I want you. I seek after you. I seek after your kingdom first. And God taught me this a long time ago when I was a young teenager, and he planted this in my spirit because I was wanting a wife and I was wanting a, a good career and I was wanting this. I was wanting to do ministry and, and all these things. And at the, the time, I was basically farming, helping a guy, doing farm work and just doing, and that was basically it, coming to church and farming, trying to live for the Lord. Didn't really see a lot of future in anything. And I, but I was seeking the Lord and the Lord said, if you'll seek me first in my kingdom, then I'll take care of you in every other area of your life. And some of you, that's a word for you tonight. Some of us, we've been seeking after the things, we've been worrying, we've been fretting, we've been doubting, and God's saying, put all those things aside, put me first, seek me first, come unto me first. And that's what we're going to be doing tonight. We're going to be coming to him because he's our God, he's our Father. In the, spirit, in the Spirit-filled life Bible, it says, rather than being preoccupied with material things, our ambition should be to seek first God's kingdom and righteousness, knowing that as we do so, he has pledged himself with covenant faithfulness to respond, all these things shall be added to you. So when we put God first, when we put his kingdom first, God's going to take care of us. What God's called us to do, he's going to provide for us. If he's called you to be married, he's going to provide. If he's called you to have children, he's going to provide. If he's called you into the ministry, God's going to provide. But we shouldn't necessarily be seeking the provision. We need to be seeking the provider first. Are you with me? That's what God's called us to do. Are we desiring God more than everything in our lives? Another thing I want us to, to, to think about and to meditate on tonight as we're going to be praying is found in Hebrews 11, chapter 6. I'm, I'm sorry, Hebrews chapter 11, verse 6. Hebrews chapter 11, verse 6. You know, when we're seeking God, we have to come to Him on His terms. Amen? When we come to God and we pray, we're seeking Him, we want Him, we're praying for things. Of course, it's okay to intercede and ask God for things. It's okay. But when we come to God, like tonight, we come to Him on His terms, the way we approach Him. God is a faith God. God is not necessarily moved by our needs. I know that, that flies in the face of what a lot of people teach. But God is not necessarily moved by our needs. If God was moved just by our needs, then he would just take care of what everybody needs and we move on. God, No, God is moved by our prayers. God is moved by our faith in our prayers. It says in Hebrews chapter 11 verse 6, it says, and without faith, 
It is impossible to please God. For whoever would draw near to God must believe that he exists and that he rewards those who seek him. And one translation says diligently seeks him. Now, the Amplified Bible says it this way. I love it. It says, but without faith, it is impossible to please and be satisfactory to God. For with whoever would come near to God must necessarily believe that God exists and that he is the rewarder of those who earnestly and diligently seek him out. You know, God is not hiding, but for those who are not uh, following after the Lord, who are not hungry after God, there is kind of a hiding in God. Because we have to seek God out. And every step we take toward God, God will take a million toward us. He wants us to, to seek after Him. But it didn't say that it's unlikely that we would please God. It didn't say that we might not please God. No, it said it's impossible to please God if we don't come to Him in faith. In other words, you're not going to have any chance to please God if you don't come to Him on His terms, which is faith because God is a faith God. We need to remember God hasn't made it hard for us to please Him. Did you know it's easy to please God? If we come to Him in obedience and in faith, believing that He, he exists, first of all, and believe that He is a order, we can please God. It's not hard to please God when we come to Him on His terms. See, a lot of times we come to God on our terms. We come to God our way. Amen? We come to God thinking, okay, I'm going to do it my way. No, you you ain't going to do it your way. You're going to come to God his way, and that's by faith. We need to remember that we can't please God and not know it. Are you with me? We can't please God and not know it. We're going to know when we're pleasing God by his very nature, God is a rewarder. God wants to bless you. Do, do you think when you come to God in prayer, like tonight we're going to be praying, and Pastor Jeremy, we're, we're going to be going, doing some tag team praying tonight. Do you think God just sits there when we come to him and he says, all right, let's see how good they pray. Let's see what they say. And he just, he just okay, ah, well, I might answer it. I might. No, God's not like that. God wants to answer our prayers. He wants to be found by us. God wants to be just as close to you as you want to be with him, if not more so. Amen? He wants to bless us. Think of how you want to bless your children. I want to bless my children. I want to bless my grandchildren. And God wants to bless us as well. The Weymouth translation of that Hebrews eleven six says it this way. But where there is no faith, it is impossible truly to please him. For the man who draws near to God must believe that there is a God. Amen and that he proves himself a rewarder of those who earnestly try to find him. God proves him. I love that. God proves himself a rewarder to those who earnestly try to find him. God talks about rewarding us through all of Scripture. God wants to bless his children. God wants to answer our prayers. That's the reason he wants us to pray. That's the reason he wants to to seek him, because he wants to be found by us. Amen. Amen. So what I want you to do right where you're at, I want you to, if you're there with your spouse or maybe you're by yourself or you're there with somebody, I just want us to get in an attitude of prayer. Get in an attitude of worship right now. You know, Pastor Jeremy did a wonderful job leading us in worship. And and right now, let's just say, Father, we love you tonight. And I just want you to close your eyes. Uh, You know, if if maybe you're in a room with somebody, just just trying to get in your own space because I want us to pray. Maybe... You might not want to pray out loud, but pray under your breath. But just say, Lord, we just love you. We worship you tonight. And God, we hunger and thirst for you. Lord, we seek you first. God, we thank you for all the things you've done for us. We thank you how you're our provider. But Lord, we seek you first tonight. We seek your kingdom first. We ask that you would forgive us and cleanse us of any sin in our lives. Of any disobedience, anything we've done knowingly or unknowingly, Lord, cleanse us by the precious blood of Jesus. Lord, we come to you and we say we want you. We need you. Lord, more than anything in our lives, we want your presence. Father, as we begin to pray, thank you that you hear us. We can be confident that as we pray, as we come to you according to your will, you hear us. In Jesus' name.
And right now, I'm just going to begin to pray. And the first thing I usually start out with on these Wednesday nights is prayer. I start praying for families because the enemy wants to destroy your family. So let's just begin to pray for family. And as we're praying, lift up names. See, you know, you got influence and you know people I don't know. Lift their names up before the Lord tonight. Let's pray. Father, first off, I won't pray that you would strengthen marriages, God. I pray that you would strengthen relationships between husbands and wives, oh God, in Jesus' name. That husbands and wives would draw closer to God. And they would draw closer to each other. That, Father, husbands would love their wives like Christ loved the church and gave his life for it. That, Father, that wives would love their husbands. That wives would respect their husbands and submit to their husbands. And that, Lord, we would submit to one another, Lord God, in marriages. So, Holy Spirit, have your way in marriages. Lord, those that are separated, God, I pray for restoration in those marriages, that they would repent where there needs to be repentance. And, God, if there be a way to restore those marriages, I pray for those who have been divorced right now. And, God, they're broken. Maybe some of them have been divorced, and maybe some of them have been remarried, and other ones have not, and, and there's just heartbreak, maybe unforgiveness. Lord, I pray for those divorced people. Lord, I pray that you would restore their lives right now restore their lives and there would be genuine repentance in Jesus name God I thank you Father right now for parents the Lord God the parents would have wisdom on how to raise their young children Lord God in the fear and admonition of the Lord to train them up in the way they should go well Lord we know your word says that when we train them up in the way they should go they will not depart from it they will eventually come back if they run so Lord anoint parents to do the right thing Lord anoint us as uh, adult parents of adult children, Lord God. Father, thank you that you would give us wisdom on how to help them in their marriages and their children, Father God. Father, we pray for our children right now that they would give their hearts to you at an early age, that they would serve you all the days of their life, that they would be innocent to uh, what is evil and wise to what is good in Jesus' name. That, Father, you would give our children godly friends and remove the wrong friends, Lord. You would put them in the right schools, that they would have the right careers. Father, I pray that they would wait for the right spouse, that they wouldn't try to get married quick, but, Lord, they would pray and seek you, Lord, and that you would provide them with the right spouse in Jesus' name. Be with our young children. Be with our adult children tonight, God, our grandchildren, great-grandchildren, in Jesus' name. And, Father, right now my mind's going to one, the one person in particular who, who wants their, their grandchild is living with them. They're taking care of their grandchild. Father, I pray for that right now. Lord, protect them right now. Strengthen them. God, I pray for those children that are strung out on drugs and, and any type of uh, uh, addiction, Lord God. Deliver them, we pray, in Jesus' name. Father, I pray for our single adults. Lord, those who are single, Lord, they might be feeling so lonely they, they, uh, that maybe they've been married and they're separated now. Maybe they've never been married. God, I pray that you would be their spouse. You would be their husband, their wife. You would be their friend. You would just surround them. Right now, if you're listening tonight, you're a single adult, just say, just I just pray and the Holy Spirit just surrounds you with his love in Jesus' name. No matter what people say, no matter what situations, Jesus loves you. You are not alone. So we pray that you would bless our single adults. All of our families, oh God, in every aspect, oh God, in Jesus' name, have your way in our families. In Jesus' name. And now, Pastor Jeremy's going to pray for all the ministries here at Living Word. So Father, we just, God, we, we are so blessed, Lord, and we are so thankful in the blessings that you've given us, God, continuously and throughout Living Word Church, Lord. God, you are an amazing, amazing God. It is just a reminder of how, well, yesterday was such a reminder of all of the things that you've taken us through as a body of believers and how amazingly you have blessed us in it. So, Father, while I got it on my mind right now. God, I'm just praying for Anthony, Lord. I'm praying for Anthony that, that God, that, that pain and stuff that is swelling that he's feeling in his legs, God, that it would be removed in the name of Jesus. That, Lord, it would be healed. That, God, he would be able to walk free with that left foot, Lord. That it would be right and whole. And, Lord, there, there would be no need for a cane, Lord. That, God, it would be easy on him. So, Lord, I'm just praying for that wondrous healing power on him, Lord. God, I'm praying for your healing over his body. God, I pray that you would, Lord, I pray that you would be with all the rest of our living word families that's, that are dealing with sickness or dealing with death, Lord. 
right, right now. Just God, there's so many people right now that are that are experiencing the loss of a loved one. Lord, it's it's encapsulating to, to be in that circumstance right now. I, I just this morning, I'm praying for Nick Moorhead's family as the passing of Nick Moorhead. God, I know Miss Jane and Scott and all them. I know they're they're really feeling the weight of loss. And Lord, I just pray that you would just be with all of our ones that have, have lost a loved one in these last few seasons. Lord, I pray that you would continue to be with all the ones that are experiencing sickness in our church. That Lord, the ones that are either in the hospital, Lord, that are the ones that are homesick right now. Lord, I just pray for healing for the people of Living Word Church and the community that they are made in contact with. Lord, I'm just praying for the the influence of love and give and the gifts of God that are poured out on Living Word's people to be poured out through them on the people within their communities. God, I'm praying for our kids' town, Lord, our Sunday morning children. God, I'm just praying that it will continue to grow. I know it is an amazing place to be, God, where there's a lot of children that need more workers. And so, God, we thank you for that opportunity to see that place to be. And so, Lord, I'm just praying that you would continue to bless the growth of the children's ministry, but also I'm praying that you would send laborers to, to work the land, Lord. And so, God, I'm praying for more volunteers, more people to come in and help as Alicia and all them guys over there. They're just doing the Lord's work week after week. And, God, I know you'll see it, and, Lord, I know you're blessing it. Lord, I pray that you would continue to bless Awana. God, just you're using us in such a mighty way to be able to instill faith and biblical truths into children at such a young age and do it so fun to make them, to get them involved. And so, God, I just pray for a continually instilling in them the Word of God. That, Lord, that they would remember those things and they would know what is right and they would know what is of God when they are. I just I thank you for it. Lord I pray that you'd be with sold out and infused continue to use us in a mighty way Ray and Alicia and me and, and Kayla and Julie and, and all the ones that are working all the six families that are making meals week after week after week to feed kids that Lord that, that honestly some of these kids you know their circumstances that God some of them that might be the first meal they've ate that day Lord, and so God, I just pray that you give us the resources to continue to do those things. That Lord, those tiny little things, something as small as meatloaf to a kid who probably hasn't eaten that day and probably only one time eat on Thursday. That Lord, that you have used us and that you've given us the resources to be that little spark in someone's life and needs it so much. So God, I pray that you continue to send those to us. We want them. God, I want them. I want every mixed up kid, every messed up situation. Bring them to us, Lord, so that we can shine the light of Jesus on them continuously over and over and over. And God, I'm praying for our leadership. Lord, I pray that you continue to protect Pastor Ron. Lord, you bless him and his family. That just in an overflow of God's goodness which is be poured on his family and his life. That Lord, he would be protected against the enemy. Don't let the devil come in and make such damaging thoughts in his head. That Lord, that he is just protected from the enemy. Lord, as he is the mouthpiece here and the, and the head of this church leading us to new found places. God, I know it's got to be tough. It's, it's got to be hard when when COVID's here and we're been here and we're, we're post-pandemic uh, and we're trying to figure out everything. We're trying to get the ministries back going. We're trying to make new moves. And so, God, I'm just praying that you would continue to, to just instill great courage and endurance and joy and, God, just everlasting pieces in our life that make us see that we're not just we're not stuck in our circumstances, but we're working towards eternity. And so, God, I pray you continue to steal that in Pastor Ron's mind, Lord. And, God, that he sees that what he does here today is for eternity. And the thing, the moves he makes, the words he speaks, the decisions he makes is not just for the moment. It's 
not just for this Sunday. It is for people's eternity. And God, he would rest in that, knowing that God is using him in, that you are using him in that place. And there's no reason to be weary. There's no reason to worry about what circumstances look like. God, you are using him in a mighty way. And Lord, I pray that same thing over Natalie. I pray that same thing over me. God, I pray that our deacons and our board members, our elders, that Lord, that you would continue to, to use them. God, just instill just great joy and passion for the ministry continuously in their lives. That Lord, they would, as, as we grow older, sometimes we just want to kind of take a break. And it's fine to take a break, but Lord, there's still a burning spark and passion to see the gospel Worthy of here every in song Living Word Church in, in our community, Lord, all around us. That, that Worthy of our days, as good as the be. days have been for Living Word Church in the past 41 years, there are bigger days Worthy in the of every in the name of Jesus. And we believe it. We, we, we feel it in our bones, Lord. We believe it so much. And Lord, I'm just praying for every ministry from from our missions Jesus, from the name the, above to the food every bank day. God to the music ministry to our, our care groups Jesus, the only one from beginning of the year and it's going to be going to be getting back started God for servants heart of of every breath our prayer chain our men's and ladies every ministries day. our ushers our greeters all of Are our ministries Lord I just pray that God that you would continue to send uh, people oh, who want to be involved there is and Lord no that the, the food bank which is prosper in the name of Jesus that Lord the, the music ministry would continue to grow and people who are, who are pursuing holiness and want to express God's goodness on stage every single Sunday and Lord I'm praying for every one of those ministries that love you that want you that want to see people know you and it's in Jesus that we pray. Yes. Thank you. Praise you. Praise God. Father, we just cry out, just what Where Pastor Jim was saying, we cry out for awakening and, and revival in this ministry. Lord Jesus, thank you for the words that spoken over this ministry. We pray in the past, the promises of God that's been spoken and prophesied over this ministry, we declare them to come to pass for revival, for awakening. Starting with me, my family, Pastor Jeremy, his family, the leaders, on down through all of our people, God. Awaken our hearts, oh God. Pour out your spirit in such a mighty way like we've never seen before, God. Pour out your spirit in Chadburn and Whiteville and Columbus County and surrounding counties. Pour out your spirit in this area, Lord, in all the churches, oh God. We pray for revival in North Carolina. We pray for revival in America and the nations of the world. God, have your way, Lord Jesus. God, have your way. We pray for those people right now that can't pray for themselves in Jesus' name, that need a touch from you. God, I pray for all those that I know that have left live, living word, and some of them are in ch other churches, and I'm glad they're planted, but, Lord, I know there are some that have backslid. So, God, I cry out for you that you would touch their lives right now now in Jesus name convict their hearts they would give everything back to you they would repent of their sin in Jesus name Father thank you for Chabron and Whitewell for Columbus County for Bladen County Horry County Robinson County all the surrounding county Brunswick County bless this area we pray Lord you've placed us in Chabron Lord we don't believe it's a coincidence to be a blessing to Chabron and we pray the, the violence would stop in Chabon. The violence would stop in White. Well, the violence would stop in this area in Jesus' name. God, protect our people in Jesus' name, we pray. Lord, for those who have lost family members to gun violence and, and knife violence, all kinds of violence, Lord, we pray that you would be with them and strengthen them today in Jesus' name. We pray for our city, state, government, America overall. God, that you would help our leaders make the right decisions in Jesus' name. We pray for Pre President Biden and Vice President Harris, that you would strengthen them, help them make the right decisions in all of our Congress, House of Representatives, our Senators, our Governors, our Mayors, City Council people, our school systems, Lord, our military. Oh, Father God, our, our teachers, Lord, first responders, Lord, be with them today. Help them today. Protect them, we pray. And I pray for revival in the military. Be with them today in Jesus' name. 
God, I pray that the, the, the doors for the gospel would open up into every nation, tribe, and tongue, that you would send labors to preach the gospel into every nation, Lord. God, I thank you for the Middle East, for peace in Jesus in the Middle East. I pray for the peace of Jerusalem, for Israel, that God, the Jews, would accept Jesus as Messiah, that you would reveal yourself to them today, God, in Jesus' name. Have your way in Israel and bless Israel, we pray. So, Lord God, we just turn all this over to you. I pray for the persecuted church. Those, Lord, I, I read articles all the time about how people were killed for the gospel, Lord God. We, we've really got it so good in America, Lord. But, Lord, we pray for those in the, in the rest of the world who are suffering persecution, not only just mentally, but physically, Lord. And they're in jail or they're being killed. Lord, be with them and protect them. Help them to hold fast, to hold strong during this time. So, Lord, tonight I just thank you as we're ending this time of prayer, Lord, that you would be with, with our people, Lord God. I thank you for Miss Margaret Williams, Miss Alice um, Peterson, Father God. Father God, thank you, Lord, for, for Pastor Jeremy praying for Anthony, Lord, for healing his body. And all those, Lord God, I can't remember all of them, but, Lord, you know who they are tonight. And right now, just right where you're at, just lift up the, of anybody you know. Maybe, it, maybe it's yourself. Lay your hands on yourself, and I declare healing over your body. I say be healed, be made whole right now tonight in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Whatever knee pain, back pain, I speak healing. And, Father, bless this rest of this week for a great week, a great Sunday morning service. Lord, we love you, and we give you all the praise. In Jesus' name. Hi, Live and Word Church family. Here are some ways to connect with us. You can call at 910-654-4164. You can email us at prayer at livingwordnc.com. You can send a direct message through Facebook. And you can also text our 24-hour prayer chain at 910-234-7881. There are a few ways to give here at Living Word Church. The first option is to mail in your contributions to P.O. Box 385, Chadburn, North Carolina, 28431. You can also give by using the Alexio app. And last, you can text to give at 910-390-1212.